what's wrong with many of us. <sighs> the devil is getting the glory and God is getting what's left over. We talk a lot about what the devil is doing and what the, his imps are doing, but what about God? You know, if I was, since I am married, if my wife started giving another man more praise than she giving me, we, we got a problem. Amen. Ain't no devil supposed to be getting God's glory from God's people. But the going thing today is between church folks, I didn't say saints, but between church folks is we, we major a lot on the negative and not on what the positive things that God is doing. It ought not be so, but it is so. And that's why I thank God that he gives us insight into what's going on in people's lives. Do you know if you're spiritually minded, God will allow you to see inside people's hearts? Now, what is that for? In order for you to know how to pray concerning that person, not for you to put their business out. That's the flaw between many men calling themselves apostles and prophets. God will give them a word, but they won't tell the person one-on-one. -on -one. They'll call them out and tell they business in front of the church house, don't you see? Why? Because it makes me look spiritual. There are not many people that are spiritually minded in God's house today. When you count, when you think about the myriad of churches open in Jesus' name and the myriad of preachers preaching in Jesus' name, there's not very many spiritually minded people professing to know God. If we were spiritually minded, we would be concerned about more than just ourselves. Many of us are self-conscious instead of God conscious. We always focus on the negative, how this is going to affect me, how this is making me, set me back, how I can't get ahead. But do you not know that promotion, Psalm 75, promotion don't come from nobody but God? And if God don't promote you, it's because you're not doing what he told you, what you know to do. See, known truth is dangerous. Amen. Amen. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this thing, y'all. I don't want nobody else touching this thing. Amen. We have an appointment, and you're not going to escape. I'm not going to escape my appointment. I was ordained to be here at this particular time to pastor this church at this particular time, but I got little enough sense to know I'm not going to be pastor at this church always. I got that much sense. More powerful men, more, more anointed men than I am have came and gone. They did not miss their appointment. When God say your time is up, your time is up. Moses, Moses, you would have thought Moses would have still been here as close as he was. Hey, this man was in the very presence of God and wasn't even filled with the Holy Ghost. But God told Joshua, I'm, I'm quite sure when Moses and Joshua came up to the temple, and God got through giving Moses instructions and Moses got ready to leave. And when he looked back, Joshua was still there. I'm sure God told Joshua, I'm getting ready to take Moses. You're going to take his place. You know what the wake up call is for most of us? You'll get busy with God. You'll get serious with God when you realize that you got to die. Show sure enough. And when you realize that your days are numbered, you're not going to waste no time, amen, worrying about this and worrying about that, trying to do this and trying to do that, trying to be this and trying to be that, trying to have this and trying to have that. You're going to obey God. Why? Because God has opened your eyes to see eternity. Hallelujah. People ain't just leaving here and then dead in the grave. No, sir. Hallelujah. Heaven and hell are a reality. And we're going one way or another. And wait a minute, God is not pitiful to no sinners. No church in center. He has pity on those that have never heard the truth. What is the truth? 
Jesus Christ came to save you from your sin. If you don't receive Jesus Christ in your lifetime in hell, you lift your eyes. That's the gospel in a nutshell. You believe you say amen. Reach over and get your Bibles. Turn with me to Matthew 16. There's a lot of blessing and healing. There's a lot of miracles. God is a miracle worker. God is the only miracle worker. But that same miracle worker is not limited to blessing you and healing your body and meeting your needs. But the greatest miracle is that when God saved you from sin. And the next greatest miracle is that miracle working power that dwells in you that's able to keep you and walk up right before God. You believe me? Say that. It takes a miracle to do that. It takes a miracle to live right, to do right. Matthew 16, are you there? We're going to begin reading it. Hallelujah. We're going to begin reading at that. That 24th verse, pick it up in that 24th verse, son. Matthew 16, 20. 24. Read, read. Then said Jesus unto his then disciples. Then said Jesus to his disciples, talking to church folk, those that are following him. He's not talking to the sinners. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to those that's following him. Giving them the stipulation, if you plan on following me, you're going to have to lose you. You can't follow me and you too. You can't follow me in your family. You can't follow me in your friends. You can't. Why well, bless this name? Read. If any man will come Call after it, me. You got to give up your ambitions. Read it. If any man will come after me. If any man will come after me. He's only talking to those that followed him. Right then and then right now this minute. Everyone that's following Jesus Christ. He's telling you up front what it's going to cost you. Listen, beloved, everything costs, don't it now? They don't give you the gas that comes to your house for free. The electricity that runs these this power, amen, pray God, you don't get that for free. Hallelujah. And even the people that work for those companies, they got to pay for theirs too. Everything worth something is going to cost you some free. Let him deny himself. Let him. The person next to you ain't the one your problem. You are your problem. Read. And take up his cross. Wait a minute. If you're going to come after me, deny yourself. There's your ambitions, what you want, what you want to have, what you want to be, what you want to see. Hallelujah. Everything that makes up you, he's telling you, surrender it, bring it to this altar, leave it at this altar, and take up me. Let me come in and rule you from the inside. See, Christianity, excuse me, salvation is an inside job. He gets the inside right first and the outside going to line up. Amen. Hear me say amen. Hey. And follow me. And do what? Follow me. If you're going to come after me, deny yourself first and then follow me. And this over here. It's a continual self-denial and a continual falling in his steps. Read. 25, for whosoever shall save his life. If you want to hold on to what you're doing if you, and, and still profess to be a Christian, if you want to hold on to your wicked lifestyle and still claim to know the Lord. Hey, James put it this way. Don't be a hearer of the word and not a doer, deceiving your own self. The devil, the devil ain't nowhere in there. He got you caught up in yourself. You deceiving your own self, bro, will it? The devil got you deceived. Think you're on your way to heaven and on your way to hell. You believe it's amen. amen. And, can't, and you know when you, you in bad shape, but can't nobody show you the truth. Amen. And wait a minute. The truth only comes one, maybe twice. Maybe twice. Depending on whether you accept it or reject it. Your attitude toward God's word is going to determine whether you make heaven your home. You believe it's amen. amen. I ain't no summer down. Amen. Praise God. I've been waiting all along. Last week the preacher shall lose it. If you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. What is he saying? Is he talking about you losing life over here? Oh, no. 
He goes on to explain about it. He's dealing with eternal life. If you want to hold on to this thing over here, then you lose eternal life. It slips right through your fingers. Amen. Why? Because everything over here is dying. Everything dies. Everything is dying over him. I love my mama, but I couldn't keep her him. Show sure enough now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. People that I love, I love my brother. I put him in the ground in 2011. I loved him, couldn't keep him here. When his time was up, his time was up. And whatever he did for or against God, it's over. He only gave us enough time to find him. When we find him, we better be obeying him. Because however he catch us, however we see him, however we see him after this life, it's going to be determined whether we go to heaven or hell, what we did for him, toward him, and with him, and through him, or what we procrastinated and say, well, I got time. Hallelujah. People get in car wrecks, amen, praise the Lord. Everybody get killed but them, and they say, I'm just lucky. Huh? Hallelujah. I used to wonder, I said, why in the world wicked people look like they live for years and years and years? And then God took me to the scriptures. He said, praise God, I'm giving that man or that woman a chance to repent. But there's a time when you cross the line and God, it's over. God says, so when God says it's over, ain't no preacher on this earth can keep you here. No prophet. We got a lot of prophets around here now. Hallelujah. Got a word, got a good word. You ain't living a dime with a dog meat and still talking about God going to bless you. No, he won't. No, he won't. Not in this lifetime. Read. Whosoever will lose his life. Whoever shall surrender his life. Whoever shall give up his life. Give up his lifestyle for this holy life. Read. For my sake shall for find For whose it. sake? My sake. Read. 26, for what is it? For what is a man profited? What is your profit? How, what are you going to gain? By living like the devil and hypocrite and pretending that you got God. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Shata. Everybody say, Shata. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Hallelujah. And you ain't going to realize you ain't got nothing until you run up on the devil and he beat you like he did them seven sons of Sceva. You believe say amen. You ain't going to realize that you ain't got the real thing when the devil run rock shot. You believe say amen. amen. What the God's people need now is a dose of this word, a triple dose of this word, amen, in their heart in order to change them from being a, a wannabe saint. You know what a wannabe is? I want to be some, but I ain't got the backbone to do what it takes to get what I want. Oh, y'all going away from here. Hallelujah. Read. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his lifestyle over him, give up his lifestyle over him for my sake, shall do what? Find it. Shall find true life, eternal life. You believe me say amen. Read. 26, for what is a man profiting? Now, it here's the question of the ages that not one man ever came into this world, Roy, not one of be born can answer this right here. What can I give God to look over me living like I live? For what is a man, what is it, read! For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? Look out now, and there's something that came that close. You see what I'm saying here? I mean, the rock star, Michael Jackson, all of those that made a name for themselves in the world, they came close. They had the world by the throat, so to speak. And people hinged off of the words that they said. But my God, when death come knocking. <laughs> oh, mama used to tell her son, when God get ready, you got to move. And when God say move, where you moving to, that's the problem. Sure enough now. Hallelujah. Listen, I can't die no four or five times and then come back and get it right the next life I'm in. No, sir. I get it right now, and I don't get it right at all. You believe me? Say it, man. And they asked, Jesus asked that bunch of questions. He said, why call me Lord, Lord? <laughs> it's a lot of people calling him Lord. And a lot of us off in the church house calling him, we ain't going to respect him. We call him Lordy. Okay. Wonder why God won't touch it. He won't touch your mess. You're in your mess and he won't touch it. He won't touch it. Why? Because, you, hey man, praise God, you're still trying to handle things on your own. Yeah. You're trying to live your own life, bro, Willie. 
And lose his own soul. Lose his what? Own there it soul. is right there. There it is right there. He's dealing with eternity, Lee. He's dealing with eternity. If you hadn't have came in when God sent that 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 truth your way, you would have probably been more than likely would have been in hell right now. Sure enough. And the things that you came over here with, God has touched your body. He's blessed you. Why bless his name? Didn't have to, but he did. He brought us. Hallelujah. And after he do that, and, and that's dangerous when God do something for you. Because when he do something for you, many times the devil will take what God has done for you and give you a false sense of security thing that God just got to bless you and that God is on your side. No, sir. I ain't on God's side. I mean, he ain't on my side. I'm on his side. And I asked the same question Moses did when he came out the mountain. With the, with the word of God and came down, amen, pray God, seen the people in a backslid condition. The Bible declare, amen, that they sat down to eat and rose up to play. And Moses asked a question, who's on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, thousands of years later, gave that same call. I'm Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all you that labor in the heavenly, and I'll give you rest. Then he say, take my yoke, which is that cross. Let me take up your cross. Take my yoke upon you. What is his yoke? The wide, wide bless his name. I do always those things to please him. I came to do my father's will. Sacrifice and offering I would not, but a body. You prepare me. Lord, I come in the volume of the book. It's written to me to do your will, oh God. I bless his name. I'm here to do what you want me to do. How you want me to do it and how often you want me to do it. I bless his name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We got this thing wrong. We got it wrong. God bring us over here, pray God. We think he's supposed to be serving us. Sit down on the seat and do nothing, singing, I shall not be moved. Why well, bless his name? Lazy thing. We doing everything toward our flesh. Huh? Everything we do is toward our flesh. Hallelujah. We get a job. Hallelujah. We get a job so we can have status. That status can get us the things we want. And when we ain't satisfied with what God is doing, then we go to school and we get a degree and another degree and another degree. But we sacrifice the spiritual for the call. You believe me, Simon? Hallelujah. I don't want nothing God don't want me to want. Hallelujah. I told you before, I'm, I want to hear it again. I had it in my mind when God called me to preach, I was going to go to the seminary, hallelujah, and get a degree and another degree and another degree, hallelujah, so I could feel important. People could call me the right Reverend Dr. Douglas, but God stopped me. You're going to be something in men's eyes, you're going to do what I told you. Hallelujah. Thank God I made the right choice. You baby, say, hey, man. Ah, thank you, Lord. Ain't no way I can preach like I've been preaching these last 30 some odd years. Why bless his name? If if I had if I had disobeyed God and went the other way. Hallelujah. I had a trouble. One denomination told me if you come over here and be with us, we'll build you a church. That's why I got married. So I was single. I ain't have nobody to answer to but God. But God told me, pray God, I tell you what. Hallelujah. Do it now. Do it. You do it now. I said, excuse me for even thinking it. Hallelujah. And I told them today, faith, no, thank you. Hallelujah. No, thank you. Hallelujah. See, when people see God's hand on your life, just like Potiphar, Potiphar knew, amen, pray God, that was some strange by Joseph. Amen now. God was with that boy. Hallelujah. And people ain't got no anointing. They try to ride on your coattail. Why wow, bless his name? Hallelujah. Look out, Lot. Lot wasn't blessed. He was, amen, Abraham blessed Lot. God blessed Abraham. Abraham gave Lot what he had. Thank God the boy had a little enough sense to hang around the man that God is with, though. Hallelujah. How many praise God you got hell at home, hell on your job, but when you come here, praise God, feel like you could drive a wall. You be beside it. You get, you get, amen. You get around people that's real and genuine, praise God, they actually love you. And pray God, everybody's loving up on one until I get up and preach. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And my God, somebody must have told you, a little bird told me. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. What I'm giving you, amen, praise God, every one of us got to make a choice over him. After we get saved, after we get saved, we got to choose to live this thing. He ain't going to make us live this life here. Sure enough. Hallelujah. That ain't the end, Lee. When we get saved, that's just the first step into a larger world. You remember Simon? And don't you fool yourself. The devil ain't going to mess with you too much if you're, if you're halfway in here with the Lord. It ain't no halfway. Matthew 12, 30, he gave me this yesterday. You with me or against me. You in or you out. You saved or you ain't saved. Don't you let nobody fool you, praise God. You don't get in here by confessing and professing or following some man's prayer. You get in here when your heart is turned. You'll be saved by Thank you, Lord. We holler about God to forgive me for that. Wait a minute. The only way you know God is forgiving you for something is when God comes in and he give you the power to walk away from that thing. That's the only way you know you're forgiven. You don't have a desire to do that no more. Why? Second Richard 5 and 17. If any man be in Christ, he is. Not he going to be. Not he going to work up on it. Not he's trying to get there. No. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God. Who has reconciled us unto ourselves. Okay. I'm going to rope you in. Now, what do you think he saved you? Wait a minute. Second Corinthians 5 and 21, God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Okay, is Christ in you? What do you think God is doing through you? He's in us, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Huh? Jesus came paid the price and went back. But he said, I'm leaving y'all in charge. Occupy till I come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Only my wife and missionary college know the joy of going into the prison. Amen. Pray God with the murderers and the thieves. Hallelujah. And preaching this thing. Amen. Pray God without reservation. So much so until when that altar call is given, murderers and thieves hit that altar crying hot tears. Why bless his name? Want to be saved. That's a miracle. That, to me, is a miracle. Why bless it? How do you know, Pastor? How do you know? Because that's the only time heaven rejoices. Come on here. Come on, Luke 15. There's joys in heaven in the presence of them, not the angels. Now, I know they kind of getting in on it, but they ain't got what we got. Huh? Amen. God had to redeem us. They was just created, but God had to make us and then let us go the other way and then send Jesus to bring us back. You remember say amen. I got a song that the angels can't sing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But my God, in Luke, the 15th chapter, it says that there's rejoicing in heaven in the presence of the angels when one sinner repent. Brother, I'm telling you, they go for it too, don't you? Huh? Some mama done heard that her amen. She done went on, been praying for that baby. Pray God, that baby finally come through. Oh, go with the God. And when the, when the news hit that mama up there, pray God, I believe she cut the stair. You don't even say amen. And God is setting up there with all that love. He happy, amen. His heart get happy. He say, dance, God. Damn, your boy just came through. You don't even say amen. Woo! Y'all get mad if you want to. I don't care. Amen. You ain't going to stop me from preaching. I feel like preaching this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what it's all about. Getting people in this thing before they draw their last breath. That's what it's all about. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. And you being right when you draw your last breath. Devil don't care nothing about you talking about you saved, about you filled with some kind of spirit, as long as you ain't got the power that goes on the tail end of the Holy Ghost. Show sure nothing. I ain't talking about power to run around and trying to be a wonder working a thunder. I'm talking about power to live right, power to walk up right before God. Hey, that's a miracle. It's a miracle because his eyes are over the righteous and his ears. We can pray and things happen, don't you see? We pray and things happen. Why? Because we ain't living opposed to this word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The devil's fighting. He's trying to destroy families. We ain't got sense enough to know what's going on. But do you not know? That long as we in this world, there's a spiritual warfare going on. Whether you saved or not saved, that dog is coming to destroy. He ain't got but one agenda, and that's to kill, steal, and destroy. Oh, glory to God. But I thank God, amen, pray God. He gave me a little enough sense to know that he ain't got no power other than the power I give him. You believe me say amen. He told me to give him no place, and pray God if he get a place, it's because I done backed up off this wide. You believe me say amen. Thank you, Lord. I got a chance to study. I watch TV. I'm going to watch.
watch TV. Y'all ain't talking to me. I got a chance to pray. I got a choice. I can pray or I can go to one of the arenas <laughs> where the little guards play. We saved and sanctified until the Super Bowl. <laughs> we saved and sanctified until the thing in what that the NBA, what's the championship in the NBA? Huh? We saved and sanctified. And then once they met praying God, the little guards start tuning in. We got to race home, rush home and tune in. Amen. Don't you see? I ain't getting one dollar from them folks. Amen. Amen. Whether they win or lose, I could care less. Up until a couple of years ago, amen, pray, I wouldn't even watch no kind of game. I, I lost my interest in it. Amen. Hallelujah. I, 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 tell the truth, Douglas, they say, I, amen, pray God. I'm still thinking the folks was playing when I was watching. <laughs> now, I have to ask my son them and some of the other, hey, well, who is that? Where you been? Huh? I lost my interest in it, Lee. Why? There's no, there's no salvation in that. And can't you see even boxing? I used to love boxing. And then they start telling lies on God. I thank God for giving me the power to knock him out. Come on here. God ain't in that. He used to beat this man to a bloody pope. That thing with Holyfield and, and that other fella, Pope Bill, a Muslim. Hallelujah. And they talking about who God is. It's the battle of the gods. The devil is a lie. Why bless his name? God ain't beat nobody up. Why bless his name? He's here to save souls, not destroy them. Boy, y'all going away from him. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody man but the devil. Hallelujah. We, we sick. The whole head is sick. Why? Because instead of preaching the truth, we're preaching blessing and healing. And the people ain't got a mind to repent because we're not telling them, that, hey, you better get right with God. They're going to take you to hell. And they're trying to embarrass people about preaching against hell. Hey, you scared the children. Honey, if I could scare the children, the old, the young, the middle-aged from going to hell, let me scare them. Why? Hell is a place to be scared of. It's a place to be afraid of. You'll be beside me. You don't get in and out of there. No, sir. And there's people right now that's in diet. Many years ago from the since the world began, there are men in hell now. Women in hell now. Children in hell now. Why well, bless his name? When the flood came, it took all of the babies to hell. That wasn't in the ark. And last I checked, Abraham, I mean, praise God, Noah didn't have no grandchildren. Last I checked now. They went to hell. Who sent them now? Ask for me. Who sent them now? God is a lovable God. Why did he do that? Because if he had to let them people live, don't, you're going to be just like your daddy. If your daddy disregards God, then you're going to grow. He's going to teach you by example to disregard God. Except God step in. Why bless his name? I'm reading about Jeroboam. Jeroboam, one of the wickedest kings, amen, pray God in Israel. And pray God that man defied God, amen, until his kid got sick. Oh, God know how to touch you. That baby got sick and he told his wife, go disguise yourself and go to the man of God and see whether or not that baby going to live. Not Elijah, not Elisha. And when the woman prayed, God, when her feet hit the door, she said, come on in, wife of Jeroboam. Why bless her? The man was blind. He was blind, spent physically. But God opened his eyes. Hallelujah. You ain't going to put nothing over on us. You ain't going to put nothing over on us. You ain't going to push nothing over on us. But, you know, you got to be more loving. You got to be more caring. Use a lie. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I feel just like David. Them that know God's word and won't keep that God's word from the pulpit to the front door. I hate you with a perfect hatred. Why? Because you know right won't do right. Well, that ain't the way Jesus is. We're going to read about what Jesus was when he walked on this earth. Hallelujah. I want Matthew 5 and verse 20. I want Matthew... Give me Matthew 5 and verse 20. I want Matthew 23. When y'all get Matthew 23, I'm going to put a quarter in a paint. Hallelujah. I want James 120. I want James 120 right now. James, excuse me. Give, me. give me Matthew 5 and verse 20. For I say unto you, For I say unto you that accept your righteousness. righteousness. See, there's a lot of folks self-righteous. Why bless his name? 
I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't cheat on my wife. I don't cheat on my husband. I'm all right with God. Use a lie. Huh? That was a rich line ruler told him, good master, what must I do to be saved? And when Jesus told him to keep the commandment, he said, well, all these things I kept for my youth up. He told him, but you're lacking one thing. Your heart is in the wrong thing. God gave you the riches. See, God going to back up his word. If you obey him, you pay your tithe and all that other stuff. You give, he'll give it to you. But then if your heart get wrapped up in that, then you in sin. And that's become your God. You believe say amen, huh? Look out, preacher! Your, your money is your God! Matthew 5, verse 20, read! For I say unto you, For I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed, go beyond, go beyond going to church, go beyond having your name on a church roll, you believe say amen! You can't walk down and join the church! Jesus said you got to be born out of your sin and did a thing. Well, bless his name. Read. The righteous of the scribes. Except your righteous that scribes, the righteous of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom. Now, what does that mean? You slamming that dough in your face. Now, God ain't doing it. Yeah, he, yeah, well, bless you. He warning them. And warning them, he's warning us. Notice that's the Beatitudes, they call it. He talked about you going beyond what... The, the Pharisees and scribes do. Well, hold what you got. I want James 1.20. You stay there in Matthew 5.20. We're coming back. James 1.20, read. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Read. Read it one more time. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Read. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. All what? Filthiness and what? Superfluity uh -huh. of naughtiness Read. and receive with meekness the with engrafted word of God, which is able to save your it's soul. It's able to do what? Save your soul. And what did Jesus say? What would it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? So the only way your soul is going to be delivered, you got to obey this word. You'll be beside Amen. Read. But be ye doers of the word. Read. Doers of the word. And not hearers only. Read. Deceiving your own self. Deceiving your own self. 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and, and not, not a, a doer, read. he is like unto a man beholding his natural face Hold in a glass. Hold what you got right there. Come on back, Matthew 5 and verse 20. For I say unto you. Accept your righteousness. Talking about folks that's living now, but on their way to hell. Read. Accept your righteousness. Your... the book. You may be saved, man. That you accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes, scribes and, Pharisees. and Pharisees. You, you shall. shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 23 and verse 7. Read. And greetings in the market and to be called. Oh, you got? Give me that first verse. Read, read, read. read. Matthew 23 verse 1. Then said Jesus to the multitude read. and to his disciples, read. saying, and to the, the scribes. The multitude and his disciples. The scribes and the Pharisees set in Moses' seat. Moses seat. Uh -huh. All therefore, whosoever thou biddest you observe and observe and Whatever do. Whatever they bid you to take a look at, you look at it. But do not ye but after don't the you works. do like they do after their works, because they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievance to be borne and lay them upon men's shoulders. Read. But them themselves not move with one of their fingers. Now that's the self-righteous fellows now. Five. The backwards collars. That's the right Reverend Moses Nova, Dr. Sounding Brass, Professor Tinkling Symbol. And notice, notice, he didn't say, fellas, woe unto them. No, he said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Read. But all their works they do. To be what? For to be seen of men that they may broaden their violations and enlarge the border of their garments. Look out, money grubbers. Come on here. It's all, hey, that's where the money trail started. Remember I told you, follow the money trail? That's where the money trail got off in the church house. Why do you think they was buying and selling at the temple? Because the fellow was getting the cut. Look out, pastors. Look out, apostles. Look out, you bishops. Praise God. Read the book. Six, and love the upper room and feast and the, the, the chief rooms and the feast. Well, wait, in read. The, in the synagogue, read. seven. And greeting in the market and to be called a men's rabbi, rabbi. Rabbi or rabbi. Rabbi. Lee. Lee, rabbi. Rabbi. And the Bible say God name only to be rabbi. Huh? So if you call a man a rabbi, you just dishonor God. And you're trying to give that man God's glory, a man that's going to die, rot, and stink like everybody else. Man. Talking about a holy father. Right in here, he said, don't you call no man your father on this earth. 
And don't you call no man master because you got one master, that's Christ. Amen. You got one father, that's God. Oh, what? That's his name? Amen. Read. But, ye, but be not ye called rabbi, rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, Give and me. all ye are brothers. Verse 13, read. But. Woe unto you, scribes and you Pharisees, you hypocrites. You what? Ye, ye hypocrites. You what? You hypocrites. No, not them hypocrites like they were now. No, you hypocrites. hypocrites. Now, anybody tell you Jesus Christ is sweet and humble? Hallelujah. They'll lie about it. We read something different here. Because we talking to them to their face in front of their church members. Are y'all with Amen. me this morning? Read. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven you against me. You ain't gonna get You got to talk against anybody that is preaching the message of salvation. Look out, preachers. Look out now. Hallelujah. Well, God is in the blessed building. The first blessing you get saved. He says, seek ye first. I'm Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything you need to be added. The material comes after the spiritual. You be to say, amen. Read. It says, shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Verse 14, read. 14, woe unto you, scribes, and you Pharisees, you hypocrites. You for what? You, you hypocrites. Everybody for you shout hypocrite. hypocrite. Everybody shout hypocrite. Hypocrite. Read. Ye devour the widow house Look and for out a pretense. Now, oh, my God. Look out now, James 1, 27. He talks about pure religion, but these fellows ain't got pure religion. Huh? Huh? Amen. Pure religion undefiled before God is this, to visit or take care of the widows and the orphans in their affliction and to keep yourself unspotted. Holy from the world, you be mis Amen. Read. For it pretends for making long prayers, therefore ye shall receive the, the greater, greater damnation. Wait a minute. If there is a damnation, you're going to get more than just the Amen. average. Greater means it's going to be worse for you. Read. Woe unto you, scribes and you Pharisees. Be grief. And suffering. Read it. Hypocrites, for ye have come past seas and to land to the, make a to one. Make one a comfort, a proselyte, or a comfort to your religion, and you make him a twofold child of hell more than yourself. Give me the 16th verse. Read. Woe unto you, ye blind dogs, but say. What you got right there? Now, if you're blind, how in the world can you lead anybody else? Oh, man. oh Douglas is preaching that old condemning gospel. What I'm preaching works miracles. Hallelujah. The gospel is the miracle worker, not men, amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how can they call upon him and who they don't believe it? How can they believe if they haven't heard it? How can they hear without a preacher? Not just one preacher, a preacher. Amen. There are some preachers that are exalters. They exalt you and get you excited. Amen. There are other preachers, if you got hell, they scare the hell out of you. Don't you see? Huh? You figure out which one I am. I, I, I already know what I am. Read! Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. <laughs> but whosoever Marcus, shall Marcus, swear by the gold. Marker, Marker. Look, that's the money trail. Follow the money trail. Huh? You owe me something. Hmm. Huh? You owe me something. I told you not to swear, but you swear, so you owe me something. You got to give me four or five appreciations a year mm -hmm. to show me how much you love me. Mm -hmm. huh? If you love God's man, you're going to live by this word that God's man preaching. You'll be saying amen. amen. And they ain't going to put nothing on your back. They ain't going to lay no heavy burden on your back. Why well, bless his name? Amen. Oh, y'all going away from him. Amen. Does anybody even have a clue why this little nappy head, bald head country preacher is hated among the brethren? In this persuasion, and the Baptists, and the, all of them, they hate this man Amen. because he talk about how we raise our monies. Money. Lazy thing. Amen. Paul the Apostle had more Holy Ghost, and his thumbnail, and he said, I work with my own hands that I may not be chargeable to no man. You people say amen. Then he also told us that if a man don't work, he ought not eat. That's what the book says now. Amen. amen. I say amen to that. Amen. I'm a living witness. Amen. You get out and get off the do nut. Amen. Bet your rusty butt on somebody's job. Amen. <laughs> then you have to give to that poor mama that can't do nothing. That's right. Now I ain't talking about no leeches now. Amen. That's why I say people can't put nothing over on me. Pray amen. God. Amen. They be telling them lies and stuff. And the Holy Ghost said they lying. They lying. Amen. And out of my 
the kindness of my heart, I'm going to do something. I ain't going to bless them. i just going to give them a little something. And then I warn them and say, okay, now this money right here is sanctified money. If you do anything else with it, you go, You think you got hell now. Nah. Anything you did, do get God allowed you to give it, he going to let you let it be like you got a hole, put it in a bag with a hole in it. Why? Because you lied to the Holy Ghost. And you ought to thank God that he, amen, pray God, the Ananias is a fiber thing. Ain't, ain't too close now. It's close, but it ain't here yet. Because people lying to God's man and lying to God's people, amen, pray God, drop dead, amen. And you better know what. Nobody joining themselves to them after that. No, sir. Hey, people fall dead over there telling lies. No, they wasn't no fornicators. They wasn't no adulterers. Amen. Praise God. They just told a lie to God. Amen. God's okay. I'm going to make you an example. Amen. So it's low rain. I'm going to make you an example. Amen. amen. Show the rest of this bunch. Amen. Pray God. I ain't playing. Amen. You may have did that when you worship your little idols, your little old figurines and all that. But I'm the real God, huh? Amen. Acts 17 and 30, the Bible declares, amen, that at the time of our ignorance, God, he winked at us because we didn't know no better. But now he's command, demanding and commanding every man, everywhere to repent. Huh? Your soul is involved in this thing here. Hey. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the uh, temple, he is a debtor. All right, give me that 20. Give me that 23rd verse. Hey. Warn to you scribes and you Pharisees. Hey. Ye, or ye pay as tithes of mints and they pay and tithes. They pay in tithes, but they leave out the way to things such as judgment and mercy. Judgment, amen, praise God. They got to respect the person. If you slide me a little something, I'll judge in favor of you. Amen. Look out, you judges that's sitting on the bench now amen. that can be bought. So look out now. Amen. Hallelujah. You leave out judgment in, 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 in mercy. Huh? Amen. These things you ought to have done and not left the other undone. Amen. Now. amen. Huh? Why? Because you, you, you don't know that you got to pay for what you're doing. It hadn't dawned on you that you got to answer to God for everything you do. Listen, beloved, in Matthew, praise God, he told us that every idle word that men speak, they're going to give account of every time you tell a lie. God got your number. Amen. Hallelujah. See, that was the problem with Israel. They, they, they didn't want the true God, so God allowed nine prophets to come to him and lead them on home. God, God didn't stop them. He raised up Jeremiah. Jeremiah tell him, hey, fellas, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar come. Y'all, then the blackest scripture in the Bible is, amen, per Jeremiah 8, 20. He say, the harvest is past. The summer is in it. What was he saying? Hey, God don't care if you repent or not. It's over. Hallelujah. Everything that's going to die, let it die, Jeremiah. Amen. Pray God. Then he told that man, don't you pray for this people. My God. My God. Amen. You know you done went too far. When God lift up that spirit of prayer off of God's man, or, or if your mama praying for it, he lift that spirit up and let you go to your own way. Well, amen now. Why? You done went too far. God say enough is enough. Amen. Uh, Genesis 6 and 3, my spirit is not going to always strive with you. Huh? I'm telling you, pray God, get yourself right. And you said, oh, I got time. I'm telling you, pray God, turn on, amen, pray God, turn your life over to me. And you said, well, God, I ain't ready yet. Amen, that man is too important. That woman is too important. That job is too important. My education, my education is too important. I ain't ready to get saved yet. I ain't ready to commit to you yet. And while God is tugging, come on, pull up this. Yeah, amen, pray God, he's trying to pull you and pull you. But praise God, he knows, amen, when your last time is that he's going to tell you enough is enough. And when he turns you aloof, you're on your own. You dead, you just ain't been buried yet. None of us know where we're going to be at tomorrow. None of us. I want Job 14. I'm going to bring it in right there. Give me Job 7 and 1 and Job 14 and 4. Job 7 and verse 1. Read. Job 7 and verse 1. Somebody, anybody. Is, is there not an appointment time? Is there not an appointment time? Leave, Brother Bobby. Ain't God set a time for us to leave here? Read. To man up on earth. Is that a man up on what? Earth. My God. Hey, question. Now, can anybody answer that? Y'all smarter than I am. You're wiser than I am. Answer me. Answer that question. Read it one more time in the hearing of the people. Is there not an appointed time to man up on earth? Read. 
Are not his days like the my, days of a hire? My God. You know what a hire is, don't you? Amen. You hired on somebody's job. You're looking for your payday. What he's saying here, praise God, payday someday. Hallelujah. It, that's an appointed time. That's why I said at the beginning of this message, every one of us got an appointment, and you're going to keep that appointment. Job 14 and verse 4. Read. Who can bring a clean thing out of a clean thing? Nobody. Why? Because you got a, you got a limit just like I got a limit. Job 14 and verse 4. Read. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Who can make you holy when he filthy himself? What is he saying? What is Job saying? There's only one that can do that. Oxidol can't do it. Amen. Chia can't do it. Bleach can't do it. I bless his name. But he tells us to come now. Let's reason together, said the Lord. Huh? Isaiah 118. Come now. Let's reason, said the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. They'll be red like crimson. I'll make them white as snow. Read. Not one. Five. Seeing his days are determined. My days the are determined. Hey, Lee. Check this out. Check this out. God done already determined the day, the hour, the very second your last breath is going to be drawn. And that's it, brothers. That's it, sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, if there ever was a time for you to get right with God and if you done got right, stay right, it's now. Praise God, that spirit, that lukewarm spirit is God among us to lay out a sin bunch to come to church when we want to come to church. Well, amen now. Don't see you on Tuesdays and, excuse me, Tuesday prayer. Don't see you on Wednesday night service, Friday night service. You're a Sunday disciple. Read! The number of his months are no, with Wait him. a minute, read that one more time. Seeing his days are Seeing determined. Seeing days are determined. The number of his months. And the are, number of my months. Are with thee. Are with God. Thou hast appointed his bounds. He's appointed my boundary. That he, how, how, how many of y'all know what a boundary is? How many know what a boundary is? <laughs> it's, it's a wall in front of you. You ain't going past this hymn. In other words, your last breath is right there. And that's it. And why is he warning us before you get there? I'm trying to help you before you get there. Read, 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 read. That he cannot pass. He cannot pass. Six, turn from him. Turn from him. That he may rest till he shall accomplish as entirely in right his day. Boy, it's tough down in there. It's tough down in there. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. 